Hi there, this is Michael Devolano. I am going to explain to you something that I get asked all the time around hockey, which is uh, what the different leagues are and the different levels of hockey. And particularly, I, I now live in the United States, and I think there's a lack of clear understanding of the different paths, I will say, to pro or to you know being an adult hockey player, because there are two paths to that. And I think that... Um, you know, it's important that if your kids are in sports and they're serious athletes, or maybe they're just, you know, having fun, doesn't, you know, and they should have fun, but um, there's definitely a different level of commitment at different levels that you have a clear understanding of what these different leagues are and the different levels and what they mean. And I get asked this all the time, so I'm going to explain it. All right, so let me start like way back at, over here, which is, you know, let's say you've got six-year-old, an eight-year-old, a 10-year-old, a 12-year-old kid, whatever, right? They get older, they advance, they get better. The kids are really serious about hockey all of a sudden, right? Because it's the sport they play and they want to, you know, you ask them like, what's your goal in hockey? And let's say they say, I want to play professionally. Cool. All right. So what, what is the path to that? I think in other sports, people understand this, but in hockey, it's probably not that clear. So let's say, you know, your kid's like, six to ten years old they're probably for the most part playing rec hockey right so they're playing at some level in an organization in your local town uh, there's also what i will call rep or representative which is these are like a, you know the better players try out for a team they make a team right and there's you know different layers in here for the most part this is going to go according to their ability relative to the other kids in their organization or where that organization fits relative to other organizations, depending on whether you're doing recreational, and it's just for fun, they're probably having one practice a week, it's not that intense, and they're probably having, you know, maybe a game, and depending on which model you're in. And then I'm gonna also distinguish between USA and let's call it Canada. We can even talk about international, but this is, let's focus on these two, right? So you understand. And then you've got kids that are kind of like 11, let's say to 14 years old, for athletes, this is typically, you know, if they're serious about doing something, they're gonna have to make a lot of progress on this time frame. It's a long time, but it's a short time. <laughs> so you wanna understand, you know, if they're playing rec or rep, what those levels are. Um, now, let's say, you know, recreational, sometimes it's kind of go by, you know, colors or, you know, letters, right? Depending on the organization, or they'll give them, you know, team names, and again, this is according to the ability of the kids, and they try to group them together according to their ability to compete against other kids with similar ability in games. Rep, I will say, let's start here. Generally, let's go Canada and US, and I'll explain the difference between these things. Let's start down here. In Canada, for representative, you probably have like select or A. double A, and then triple A. And then there's an asterisk here that I'll talk about, which is East Coast versus West Coast. There's, a, some, there's, some, there's some local things in Canada that have happened, um, particularly on the West Coast with sports schools. Okay. And then in the US, typically what you've got is tier two. And within tier two, you probably have a couple different levels. And then tier one, you have a couple different levels. Right? So these are pretty analogous. Okay, That's kind of what you got. So you, you want to understand if, if you're in a team that is competing in the United States for a tier two state or national spot or tier one. And if they go to Canada, you know, they're going to play teams ideally that are at tournaments or games, you know, exhibition games, or maybe in leagues sometimes, depending how close you are. Maybe you're in a Canadian league. Okay, so what, what does this actually look like? Like, okay, so an example, we use, let's say Toronto. Because that is the center of the hockey universe. You'll hear something called the GTHL, the Greater Toronto Hockey League, and you'll hear about something called the OMHA, right? The GTHL is typically A through AAA. This is in one city, you have single age group teams Pretty much from, I'd say, I think I have to double check this, but 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and then you have 16, 17 as one group. That's the first time there's a double age group in one 
So it goes, and, and you'll hear terms like, um, you know, sorry, P, uh, atom, which is 10. So there's minor atom and atom, which is, you know, minor and major. But they don't usually say major for the most part until midget, but minor atom and then just atom. You know, this is considered the major silent. <laughs> These are, uh, I think this is actually 910. And then you've got peewee, so you've got minor peewee and then peewee, which is 11 and 12. And then you'll hear like ban uh, minor bantam, which is 13, and then bantam, which is 14. And then you've got minor midget, and this is a big year in the East, whether it's in Ontario or Quebec, because this is actually the draft year for the OHL, and I'll explain all that in a sec. Um, and then you've got major midget, and they just usually call this midget, and those are 16 and 17 year olds typically, okay? So that's in Toronto. And then similarly, like, you know, British Columbia, Alberta, Saskatchewan, like you'll have variations of this. A lot of these teams are more regional. The OMJ is outside of Toronto, and this is the Ontario Minor Hockey Association, and they have regional versions of this. So they'll have, sometimes there's a city like in Oakville or Burlington, and they're large enough to have their own AAA teams. They usually always have double and single, and it varies by, you know, sometimes birth year, right? Because different age groups are deeper than others. Um, just a demographic thing. Okay, so, but BC is interesting and Alberta is interesting because at these levels, what's happened is minor hockey, for lack of better terms, um, at the younger age groups has kind of got, um, it's gone very recreational. It's very, you know, it's not really high, high end rep. And these emergence of these things called sports schools, right? Where there's a Canadian sports school hockey league. And so you'll see like, I don't know, Burnaby Winter Club or Delta Academy. And they'll have teams that you know, people pay to play on these teams. And this has gotten really expensive. And this has kind of cleared out what's known as Makaha, which is the Pacific Coast Amateur Hockey. I think I did those, I think that's backwards. PCA, J. Just write that off. All right, confusing so far? So this is that's Canada, right, for the most part. And then Quebec's very similar to Toronto. And in the US, what you see is, you know, this tier one and tier two, and then you have this concept of, and usually it goes like 10U, 12U, 14U, 16U, 18U, right? These are typically double year age groups. In Toronto, you have single age because you just have so many players, and there's a, a you know a high level of hockey, right? So those these tend to be single age, like ten, nine is all nines, all tens, all elevens, right? You don't need nine and ten to fill the age group at a level. In the states, it's a little different. There's just usually you need this. And East Coast again is different from West Coast. Like on the East Coast, you'll have teams in Michigan or well mainly Michigan. Um, where they're very deep and there's a lot of players. Or Minnesota. Now, Minnesota is another animal <laughs> we can talk about. Minnesota is like an asterisk here because they kind of, that's the only place where high school hockey is a big deal. Okay, so where does this all lead? Because when you kind of hit this 14, 15, 16 year old age, this is where you really start seeing a separation of players that have options to play elsewhere, right? The goal for a lot of players at 14 in the West and 15 in the East, and that includes Quebec and the Maritimes in Canada, their path is at 14, they can get drafted into the WHL. At 15, depending on where they live, kids in Ontario can get drafted in the OHL, and then Quebec to the east is the Quebec uh, Major Junior Hockey League. Okay, so that's what's known as Major Junior. And then there's also Provincial Junior. 
Now, these kids get drafted at 14. So like, for example, this past year, we just drafted 2004s in the Western Hockey League. And these are teams like Everett Silvertips, uh, the Seattle Thunderbirds, the Moose Jaw Warriors, the Brandon Wheat Kings, et cetera, et cetera, okay? Ontario's like the Barry Colts, the Sarnia Sting, the London Knights. Okay, so those are teams in that league. This could be like Shakutami and Laval. And these are the best of the best 16 to 20 year olds for the most part. Now there's exceptions, right? Because there's other places to play. Once again, the West is different. So in the West, why these ages are important is because in the West, the WHL drafts at 14 years old. Okay, we're scouting and drafting kids that in their 14 year old year at the end of that year they get drafted. What that means is you know, they live in a territory that aligns with the WHL, it can be in the US and Canada, and they get drafted. So they are the, they're the, the rights to be listed by a team in the WHL, which is major junior hockey. Combine these three leagues form the Canadian Hockey League, the CHL. Okay? There's also this option of provincial junior, so there's like the BCHL, there's like the Alberta Junior Hockey League, there's the OJHL, and there's equivalent, I'm blanking on the Quebec one, is it QSHL, but I'll, I'll look that up, sorry, I should know that. And, and there's a maritime version, and there's all these like regional, there's like Junior A, so Junior A, not Major Junior. Junior Major Junior is like Junior A, but it's Major Junior. Then there's like Provincial Junior. This league is very, very strong. This league's pretty strong. And then, you know, this is a decent league. This is pretty good. But really, these leagues are considered strong because they have very close ties to another path. Okay. And I'll talk about that. So that's, that's Canada. The U.S., you'll see... Players from the US come out of here, they will get drafted up here, right? But they have a choice to make. And that choice is to maintain their NCAA eligibility. If they play here, the NCAA, so I'm going to put NCAA as like the US. This is Canada, the US, right? Actually, this is probably over here somewhere. But it's, yeah, it's up here. And then down here you would have the USHL, you'd have the NAHL, and you'd have, um, yeah, this is tier one and tier two. There's others, like there's like sports schools on the East Coast, like prep schools, and you know, they kind of feed into this and they kind of bridge it. But for the most part, you know, this is also, this is, they consider the USHL major junior, but you, it's funny, you can play USHL and maintain your NCAA eligibility, right? So you can go from here to here, but, and you can play in the BCHL, the AJ, the OJ, and in Quebec, and you maintain your NCAA eligibility. So, you know, I can go from AAA or tier one, right? And I can feed into these, but if I go major junior in Canadian Hockey League, NCAA says, oh, you're a professional. <laughs> So it's interesting, you know, they're really competing for players, but the weird thing is typically these are really old teams. These are like, you know, very rarely there's like 18, 19 year olds, the best will play there, right? But typically these are 20 to 24 year olds, right? So you can see down here, these tend to be older leagues too. Like this league tends to be, you can play at your 16, but typically it's like you're drafted at 17 and you play to your 20 or so, and then you can feed up into this, right? So this to this is a no. Okay, they're battling it out for the best American and some Canadian players. They tend to be very pro-American, but there are some players that go up there. You can see from the BCHL. What's funny is the BCHL has a lot of American players. <laughs> and there's a pretty good path from here to up here. Right? So these guys compete for players. In the sense, these guys compete for players, but they tend to be over here is 16 to 20 years old. Okay, so really, this tends to be a younger league, and you get the top top end talent. Some skims through, and you know there's obviously other paths because people make the decision not to go here, you know, because they lose this eligibility, and that's what they're thinking is school. I get a scholarship, and I get to play hockey. However, the best players that want to turn pro, pro play a pro schedule, and by the way, get a scholarship because these 
teams, if you play in the Ontario Hockey League, the Western Hockey League, the Quebec Hockey League, you get a scholarship to go to university. If you your career ends and you're done, you're not going to go play professional hockey after that. You get a scholarship to go to Canadian universities, and I think they'll play pay like an in-state type school if you're in the United States. Okay, so there's actually you you make this team, you get drafted, you decide to sign a player agreement. As soon as you sign that player agreement, you're pretty much cut off to NCAA, but you get a scholarship. Okay, you're not going to go to school and play, but you're going to play a much longer like this is like a seventy. 68 to 72 game schedule, depending on which one of these leagues we're talking about. Okay, so again, just to go back here, this is why the WHL drafts early. They draft at 14, whereas the Eastern, like the OHL and the Quebec Major Junior League, they draft at 15. So they draft the minor midget year, which is why it's a big individual year. And then a lot of players clear out, right? So they'll, you know, they'll play AAA, and you see, we talked down here about minor midget. Minor midget's a huge year in the OHL. It's a huge year in Quebec. The year before is a big year in the West, but these players, even though they're drafted, they can't play until they're 16 at the earliest, and they typically won't come until 17. Only the most exceptional will play. Okay, so the problem is, what do you do if you're a US guy? <laughs> because what happens is, you'll feed, you know, this, this tends to be home organization, or there's a couple of leagues. There's a tier one elite league, there's the NAPHL, um, which is a North American Prospects Hockey League, aligned loosely with this. Tier 1, you know, aligned loosely with all of them, tends to feed into this, right? Can also, now, the rule is here, you can't play in the BCHL till, if you're an American, I think, till 18. So you could go play in that league, but you're older and you probably already know your scholarship or you're going there because you want to get exposure to NCAA, which is weird, but that's what happens. Um, this is a little bit of a path, and this is, this is definitely a path, but this is a little bit of a path in Quebec too. You know, they get scouted by NCAA, and the guys get scholarships there too. All right? So, all of this <laughs> is potential path to pro of some sort. And there's all these different levels of pro that I can explain, but, you know, whether you're NHL, and you're the AHL, the ECHL, and there's another like the Southern Professional Hockey League, right? So this is kind of like, you know, this is pro. This is kind of like your triple A pro. So it's the call up to this, and this is the call up to that. This is like the double A pro. This is kind of like a single A. They need players, right? And you know what's interesting is you can make money in all these leagues, like you get paid in all these leagues, they're professional leagues. And then you got like all these overseas options like the KHL, Switzerland. German Bundesliga, or whatever they call it. Bundesliga? No, it's not called that. It's probably wrong. <laughs> I'll look up the proper name, sorry. Uh, you got Sweden, Finland has a pro league. Um, KHL is kind of like Russia, and you know they, they put in teams from the top teams, like Jokerit, I think, is in there from Finland. Um, the Swedish league has lost players to the KHL, so it's kind of come down a little bit. It's still very high end. You got the Czech league. And again, the better Czech teams have gone in the KHL, but this is still a pretty high-end professional league, right? So your path to pro, there's there's probably some others. Like there's the British league, which is definitely kind of like a tier one professional league, as opposed to tier two or triple A, right? So you can see that these leagues, they want high-end players. They need high-end players. There's drafts at the NHL, and NHL drafts like seven rounds. And then, you know, they can sign free agents that don't get drafted. Right? And their draft is at 18. So you can see you go, you could, let's say I'm, you know, I'm going to go through this path. I get drafted at 14 or 15. I either make a major junior team or I decide to play provincial junior. Um, I can start here and go here, or I can start here and I can go here. And then, you know, players out of here will go typically either, you know, they age out and they, they're done with hockey and they go to university and they'll play it like, on, like Ontario, for example. Or on the West Coast, there's like the BC. Yeah, I'm getting my acronyms wrong, but there's the BC University League in Canada. Those tend to be kind of like an, you know, they will still keep playing pro sometimes after, but they'll use their scholarship, go to a Canadian university, or they'll use their scholarship in the states if they're American and go to a state university. And then, you know, but they they can't play NCAA hockey at that point, right? Because they've 
earned their eligibility because they're considered pro. It's like a game. <laughs> um, is it real? No, because it's like, you know, for a lot of reasons I can get into, but that's just the reality. And then, you know, at some point you can come out of here probably to an ECHL or SPHL or you can go overseas, right? You can go from here into NHL, AHL, ECHL, SPHL, depending on your capability, or go play overseas. Um, you can go even out of here to here, but typically they go from here to here. And then, you know, again, players will age out and go into the, those feeder systems. So you can kind of see, like, you know, there's two paths. And where this, by the way, that if someone's playing rec, and even rep, this can also go to, like, the adult safe hockey league or some equivalent, right? There's always men's leagues and, you know, maybe that's all they end up with. Like kids just, they just want to play men's recreational hockey for the rest of their life. And that's cool too, right? They have other interests and that's kind of a path there. So it's not like this is a dead end. Hopefully we're creating hockey players that play hockey. <laughs> it doesn't have to be pro. It can be, you know, just for the love of the game, right? Um, we can see also like, you know, these are major milestone events where, the top players kind of clear out sometimes. They'll make junior teams, major junior, provincial junior. They'll go to tier one or tier two or tier three programs that lead to, you know, somewhere or nowhere, right? And so there's there's different ages and points in a player's career where at some point they either quit or they go play recreationally or maybe they move up, right? And it just depends on how good they are, how, you know, how they how much they love the game and keep wanting to play, and how much they're able to compete at those different levels, really. Um, so, <laughs> seems crazy, right? But this is kind of the path. So the idea is if, if someone's really serious, they're gonna ideally play you know, AAA at one of these ages, get noticed, maybe get drafted, or it's signed at some point, or if not, they keep improving, and they go this route, or they go this route, and then eventually they maybe go into the LA or they go to a pro league somewhere, right? Or again, but there's, you know, there's kind of like gates. So at each of those points, if they're not at a level where someone wants them, then they'll age out or they'll, you know, they'll just cap out and they realize they don't have options. But for the most part, you know, like if someone's serious and they keep improving and they're working on their skills and they're just getting better and better and they're a high end top percentage player, you know, the, each of these next levels takes the, the top, 10 or 20 percent from the previous level right if that makes sense and then you know these these ages you're going from competing at a single or a double age you know 14s all compete against each other or 13 14s compete against each other to suddenly you're like you could be 16 or 17 and you're playing against 18 19 20 year olds and the same thing at NCAA so it starts to blend a little bit and you just get different levels I mean you could be 18 playing in the NHL against a 40 year old right just the way it works so anyway hopefully that answers some questions oh and I had an asterisk also and there's obviously paths internationally where these leagues have junior programs so club teams right so you'll they'll have 10 12 14 year olds moving up through their own system and eventually you know they either make it up to a top club team sometimes they get drafted there is an import draft in the OHL Sometimes they'll decide to come over and play in the USHL or the BCHL. Like, so there are import players from Czechoslovakia, Russia, Sweden, Finland, etc. Um, you know, ideally you want those guys developing at home, but you know, sometimes they make a decision that they want to play, particularly major junior, because you know, so many guys get drafted there. You're playing a pro schedule and you're preparing for the pro game, right? Or NCAA, same thing. They get a scholarship and they want to play 35, 45 games at a high level against men. And they think that gives them not only an education, but a path to pro. So there's definitely players that go at all those levels. So, uh, okay, so I had an asterisk around Minnesota. Minnesota is a little bit different in that high school hockey is actually really big in Minnesota. And they develop very, very good players. There's a lot of players in Minnesota. And typically they will go from high school into, you know, a path into the USHL or the NAL. Um, this is a major feeder into NCAA, you know, probably via these teams eventually, right? So you might have a kid, 11, 12, 13, you know, so is it 14? Yeah, 14, 15, 16 tends to be big in high school. Like the quality of hockey there is very good. There's a lot of really good players there. And, you know, the WHL, that's in the WHL territory for major junior. Some kids trickle out of this, but it tends to be a very strong path to here and then here. 
as opposed to very few players will go into major junior from Minnesota. It's just a different animal. There's a lot of good schools there in NCAA, like Minnesota Duluth, and, you know, teams like St. Cloud. And, you know, they're they're big NCAA markets. So that that's probably the exception to most places. And there is like this, you know, you like the prep school leagues on the East Coast. So there are those are emerging and they kind of vary in quality, but they because they're very like. They're prep schools, so they're somewhat academic focused. They're tied into NCAA. Those also tend to be a, a greater and greater path, and guys will opt for that. So, all right. Hopefully, this is not too crazy. If you have questions, ask them below. If you have comments, I'm sure I know I screwed up some of the acronyms. I'll look them up and I'll put them in because um, I've been in the West a little bit too long and the U.S. a little bit long. But generally, these are the different paths and the gates that you have. If you have questions or comments, look forward to them. Hit subscribe if you want to see future content on prospects, advancing in hockey, player development, and I'll even, you know, I'm going to review pro teams and teams at some of these different levels, depending on, um, you know, what I'm able to scout and, um, you know, what people have an interest in seeing. Thanks. Hopefully this is helpful.